Look at that. If they really had blacked out the gray parts here, you would have no idea what this is about. You know nothing. You wouldn't know that our army trains the Chinese troops. You wouldn't know the army wanted to cancel only one of several joint training sessions, and you wouldn't know that deeply enraged Trudeau and the whole liberal bureaucracy who wanted to handcuff the chief of defense staff and force him to continue working with Chinese army uh, troops uh, unless he was given explicit permission otherwise. So that's the cover letter to the memo, and then they have their arguments. And I know this video is getting long, but frankly, it's all leading to this. Look at this part. Look at the very, very dark part in paragraph two. I'll read it out if you can't quite see it. The review is also driven by concerns expressed by the United States military that at least one element of Canada-China military collaboration planned for 2019 risks unintended and undesired knowledge transfer from Canada to the PLA. That's it. That's, that's everything right there. It's very dark, but you can see it if you look carefully. Look for yourself at thechinafiles.com. Trudeau was making the Canadian Armed Forces give private military training to China on a Canadian Forces base in Ontario. And America said, whoa, you're, you're teaching them our secrets. And instead of Canada saying, you're, you're right, what, what are we thinking? The entire Trudeau government says, yeah, you stupid Americans, we're with China now. That's what this memo means. I mean, just ask our ambassador to China at the time, John McCallum. He's mentioned in these files. Here he is when he was asked about Canada-China relations and on what terms. Within 24 hours of arriving in China, I was invited to present my pre credentials to President Xi Jinping, and I conveyed to him a message from our Prime Minister that can be summarized in three words, more, 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 or in Mandarin, gung dua, gung dua, gung dua. You know, McCallum actually said Canada has more in common with China than with the United States. He said that. When the only constant in life is change, you need to be ready. This is the Man Made Survival Show. Hello everyone. My name is Jose Prado of Man Survival. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel and watching this video. I really do appreciate it because this is the second video of this two-part series video that I'm doing about, you know, how China has infiltrated the United States of America. And it has infiltrated very deeply on every level, you know, and through government on both sides of the aisle, whether it's Republican, whether it's Democrat, uh, you know, they even they, they even are inside <clears throat> very many corp corporations, businesses and so and even down to the to the school board level, you know, they have integrated themselves to that extent. And, and more information has been coming out in the past several weeks of how really deep the infiltration is. So it's important that we talk about this. It's important that I give you this information because you need to understand what's going on, but not just what everyone is talking about. I don't want to become a, an echo chamber where I'm just repeating what everybody else is saying. I want to show you the different parts that people are not talking about that stand out to me because they're there's certain things that we have to prepare for, okay? So, for example, in the first video, what I did, instead of giving you the political, you know, rundown of everything that has been coming out about, you know, um, Fang Fang and all that that you've been hearing here lately, I gave you the information on how the intelligence community is coming out and saying that China is a big threat to the United States and that they're on the race of having generically modified soldiers, I also showed you and gave you the information on how Russia is doing the same thing. The United States is doing the same thing, all right? And not only that, they did say, or at least Putin say, that whoever controls or actually comes out with the technology first on super soldiers, that country will rule the world. And the reason is because once you have super soldiers that do not, you know, they, they don't have remorse, they don't have regret, they don't, they don't feel pain. They don't even have to sleep. They can continue fighting 24-7 until the goal is reached. It's going to be a very important asset for any country to have that type of soldier. Now, I took it a step further. What would happen if we eventually have the technology where we could actually fuse together a super soldier to an AI brain? 
you know, with, with the computer chips that Elon Musk is coming out where, you know, the Neuralink, where you can actually connect your brain to the internet and you can control certain devices with just your brain, with just thinking about it. What would happen if you actually give that type of ability to a super soldier where they are connected to the internet 24 seven, they have unlimited knowledge. And not only that, they have super strength. They have the ability to do whatever they want. What we would create would be a godlike hybrid that we would that we would not be able to control. So those are the things that other people are not talking about that I'm sharing with you here today, and what to do in order for us to be prepared. All right. So what this video is going to be about is going to be about how already naturally populations would be for genocide. And the reason that I feel that it is important for us to understand this information is because some people are in denial of how evil men's heart really is. You know, when we think about war, we only think that soldier would go against the soldier from one country to another, and that's as far as it would go. And people would, would just be casualties of that war, right? Just, you know, they were in the way, there was a surprise attack, whatever the case may be. And the population would be, or, you know, the, the innocent uh, the innocent bystander would try to be avoided as much as, can, as, you know, as we possibly could in war. But what I'm going to be showing you here today is that the, the friction between countries has gone from being on the government level to the population level. There are countries who are talking about committing genocide on another country if they had the opportunity, right? I'm going to be showing you a speech and, you know, a survey that was done where a certain population, when they were asked if they were to go to war, would they willingly kill women and children in another population that had nothing to do with the war? And in the survey, they say that, yes, they would. They would kill the entire population if we were to go to war against them, All right? So that's what we're going to be talking about here today. And it's not just, you know, in the Middle East, it's not just in the Asian countries, it's also in the Western countries where all of this mentality, where all this potential of genocide and, you know, creating mass havoc can come from. All right, so the first thing that I have for you is this. Iran newspaper, a strike high five if Israel kills scientists. That's from APnews.com. And before I get into that, before I get into that article, you know, I do want to pretty much give you a little bit of background. So what happened is that a few weeks ago, one of the scientists from, from Iran actually got killed. And as has been reported, he got killed by a drone. And as far as I understand it, he was pretty much gunned down. And now, you know, he's dead. And the Iranian government is really, they're really angry about that death. You know, this is the second casualty of an important figure that they have in that country that has been killed by either Israel or the United States. Now, right now, there's nobody has actually claimed who killed them, but the speculation is that Israel actually killed the scientist, right? So pay attention on what the, this newspaper is calling for against the Israeli people. A, an opinion piece published Sunday by hardline Iranian newspaper urged Iran to attack the Israeli port, port city of Haifa if Israel carried out the killing of the scientists who founded the Islamic Republic's military nuclear program in the early 2000s. Though the Harlan Kenyan newspaper had long argued for aggressive retaliation for operations targeting Iran, Sunday's, Sunday's opinion piece went further, suggesting, suggesting any assault be carried out in a way that destroys facilities and also causes heavy, heavy human casualties. All right, so... The reason that I wanted to show you this is because, yes, we know the history between the Arab world against Israel and vice versa, okay? They have had this conflict for, for a long, long time to the point where they would just rather destroy the entire state of Israel. The same thing can be said about Israel, about its neighbors. They would just rather, you know, get rid of all the Palestinians, get rid of all the Iranians, the point is that 
the potential for genocide is already there, you know, because this conflict has been going on for a long time. So the next, the next um, Helen that I have for you takes the things from the Middle East to the Western countries, all right? Remember, we are the West where we're supposed to be civilized. We have rules of engagement for the military. We have the Geneva Convention. We have rules that we have set out to where we're not just savages killing each other, but we actually have rules for war. All right, so that has been taken out of the equation. So a lot of things have come out to light on how certain militaries are behaving when they're in foreign soil. So the reason that I want to show you this is because it could actually happen here in the United States as well. All right, if we ever have an invasion in the United States for a foreign country, you can bet your bottom dollar that a lot of atrocities will happen here, such as rape, right, killing the innocent, killing of children, women, and men alike for the sole purpose of not only taking over that, uh, that region or taking over that land, but just to get completely rid of those countries' people because there is a type of hatred that we have not seen for a very long time, okay? So you have to get prepared for that, not just physically, but also mentally, especially spiritually, because you're going to have to have enough courage to fight an army that's coming against you so you can protect your wife and your children because very, very bad things happen to women during wartime, which is exactly what I'm going to be getting into into this article. Not is it fixed. Australia Special Forces bloodlust and competition killings in Afghanistan. That's from Sarah Hedge. Before I get into the article, I do want to mention that for the Afghanistan people, for a lot of people in the Middle East, okay, crap has hit the fan. Their country has been devastated to the point where it's, not, it's no longer recognizable. We have seen the videos on YouTube and other places where you compare how these countries look like before, you know, before we went to war against them in 2003 with the Bush administration and the after when we had already come through and bombed the crap out of everybody. You can see the devastation or, you know, the progression of the devastation as the war continued. The same thing can happen here in the United States, all right? As I showed you in the previous video, we are headed towards war. Sooner or later, we don't know when, but my bet with all the information that's coming out, it's going to be sooner rather than later. And I guess it all depends on how things go down, if the Biden administration does come in, into power. But the point is that eventually there's going to be a day of reckoning where we can have a battle, a modern warfare battle, in U.S. soil. The last time we had a battle, you know, on U.S. soil, if I'm not mistaken, was in the 1800s. And, you know, I'm going to do a real quick Google search here um, live, I guess, so we can get that information up to date. Um, 1865, while the attack on Pearl Harbor during World War II and the attack on the World Trade Center in 2001 resulted in thousands of Americans' death, the most recent war fought on American soil was the Civil War, which ended in 1865. So really, we haven't had a war here on U.S. soil for almost 200 years. Okay? So, if and when a conflict becomes so big between the, the main superpowers of the world that a fight comes to the U.S., we're going to find out exactly what the, the middle... The, uh, the Middle Eastern countries have actually suffered through, through our government, through our invasion, through our bombing, okay? So we have to get ready for that. The article says, Australia has a culture for war, and that culture breeds atrocities. The Australian government's own inquiry has confirmed many of the allegations leaked by journalists regarding war crimes in Afghanistan, it's steaming from the execution by Australian special forces of prisoners and civilians. Faced with the mountain of evidence and already public revelations, the government had no choice but to find that its armed forces had been involved in such atrocities. What of the justice for the victims and their families? A payment will likely be made and an admission of guilt. That is something more than many others have received, but ultimately it is a token. It does not remove the pain, anguish, and terror, and terror experienced. Or the fact that the people of Afghanistan have suffered an endless, brutal war 
as numerous foreign actors intervene and kill and while domestic warlords and terrorists exploit this invasion for their own devious ends. Insurgencies are menored in the blood and bones of dead loved ones, especially when the foreigners kill indiscriminately and brutally. For the people of Afghanistan, they know the true nature of the war. They know the devastation from the air as helicopters, jets, drones, and gunships devastate from above with reckless murder. The rule of war never mattered to those waging it, especially when they are often the rule riders. On the ground, where the terror is more personal, soldiers from other nations have been involved in torture, rape, executions, and murder, murder of civilians. All right, so I can understand that you probably gonna have this excuse or this this you know you're gonna fight this point where where you can say well they deserve it because of 9/11 such and such okay I'm not gonna argue with you on that point because even if certain groups did make that attack if, whether you on the side that it was an inside job or was not the point is that when it comes to war. That is a reality that will that could be lived here in the United States. Okay, so you have to prepare for that to happen. We are very close to going to war against China. There has been some rumors that I've heard, you know, from other other podcasts talking about that we were supposed to get nuked this week. Can I confirm that? Not at all. Okay, it's just a rumor. But when you just sit there and you think about, wow, we could have been nuked this week then you really it really makes you think or it actually it makes it a lot more real again i cannot confirm that information i have not heard you know other people that i listen to talk about it or anything like that so can i tell you for sure that that's happening no i cannot and you know no no other alternative media nor uh, mainstream media is reporting on it so you know you can just take it with a grain of salt but anyways, what what my point is in sharing that information is that if it's true or if it was to happen that we get nuked this week, are you prepared for that war to happen? Okay, because of course, if, if we get nuked, it's not just going to be a nuking and then, you know, that's it. Nothing else happens. An invasion force will come through and they will have to do a lot more damage and try to control this country. Right. Especially if it comes from China, they're going to have to try to control the government and the population so they can get our resources. But anyways, now that I'm talking about China, I want to show you this speech that I found from the commonsenseshow.com. OK. And it really goes to show how how the Chinese people are thinking or, you know, maybe they're making them think that way. But the point is that if that is a true feeling that the Chinese people are feeling right now to where if we were to go to war, they would be 100% behind the Chinese government. And if they were to be sent here to kill as many people as possible, they would do it, right? And we're talking about civilian population. We're not talking about soldiers. We're talking about innocent people who have nothing to do with the political theater or any other aspect of this, but they would just come in and try to commit genocide as much as they could, right? The Chinese um history already has or you know in their history already have a time or a period of time where they killed 80 million people of their own people so it is not far-fetched or or you know it's not we're not just pulling out of a hat where we can say that the possibility is still there from the communist party all right so the the article from the common sense show says this Secret leak speech by Chinese defense minister demonstrates China's intent to destroy America. China is not, never has been, or will ever be an American ally. For another report on another day, I firmly believe that when, not if, the Red Dawn invasion of the United States commences, the Chinese will be among the invading armies. That is why the Chinese control Hollywood forced the producers of the remake of Red Dawn to change the identity of the invading force from Chinese to North Korean. I believe that the script hit too close to home. Recently, the Chinese Communist Party conducted an online survey conducting, conducted by Sina.command, 
one of the key questions that they asked was the following. Quote, will you shoot at women, children, and prisoners of war? End quote. More than 80% of the respondents answered in the affirmative, exceeding by far our expectations expressed by the Chinese defense minister. General Wayne went, into, went on to say, <clears throat> The central issue of this survey appears to be whether one should shoot a woman, child, and prisoner of war, but its real significance goes far beyond that. Ostensibly, our intention is mainly to figure out what the Chinese people's attitude towards war is. If these future soldiers do not hesitate to kill even non-combatants, they'll naturally be doubly ready and ruthless in killing combatants. Therefore, the responses to the survey questions may reflect the general attitude the general attitude people have towards war the purpose of the ccp central committee in conducting this survey is the probes is to probe people's mind we wanted to know if china if china's global development will necessitate massive death in an enemy's country will our people endorse that scenario will they be for or against it all right, very important article from the Common Sense Show because if, you know, the the Chinese people are ready to kill non-combatants, then once they are turned into combatants, because, you know, the, the, the Chinese government will just tell them to become soldiers and there's no buts or ifs about it. If they don't, they probably get shot on the spot. So they will very likely become combatants overnight they will be shipped here and they will try to do as much damage, damage as possible, okay? So they're trying to gauge whether or not they are committed enough to the purpose that they would serve in a future war. It appears to be that they, that yes, they would be more than ready to do that, all right? Was their arm twisted? Were they trying to, you know, think of how the government wants them to think, possibly? Because we do understand that the Chinese people are very controlled. But the point is that if this, this, um, these feelings are very real and they are very genuine, then we have to get ready for a fight that we have not seen in this country for a long time. A lot of people are in denial today that what we have been seeing happening in this country is even happening at all. So if an invasion was to happen in the United States, a lot of people would be more than shocked. They would be very afraid on what's happening on this soil. And only a handful of people that are ready not only to defend this land, but ready to die to defend their family would actually have to step up to the plate and, you know, defend this country. So you have to be ready for that. OK, now the next thing that I have for you is it's an article that shows how close China could be getting here in the next few weeks, months, years, however long it takes them. OK because we are going to have a Cuban missile crisis as we had it with Russia, but this time with China, with better technology, where 90 miles of the coast is, no, is not far at all for a hypersonic missile. A missile which China does possess, Russia does possess. And as I have shared with you here in the past is that with, through the Belt and Road Initiative, all throughout South America, China has made a beachhead there where they are taking over those towns where they're starting to to update the ports and you know uh, building the roads and stuff like that those forces can very quickly be turned by the command of the chinese uh, government to turn into to soldiers and start marching up the southern border All right and another article now i read after this or actually it's a, technically it's a video that i'm going to be showing you is how china is already on the north that was that was pretty much a a rumor that was being heard you know if you thought that that was possible you were a conspiracy theorist but now the official canadian government's documents did come out and show that the chinese or the the um the canadian government is actually training chinese people on how to fight in cold weather you know, there's a lot of implications in that. Does that mean that the Chinese Communist Party or their military is planning to attack the United States during the winter? Or or are they just getting prepared for a scenario where they would have to attack us during the winter? You know, a winter fight 
is way different from a summer fight because there's a lot of, to consider from the weather. And I, I'm not talking about the soldiers attacking us, but civilians fleeing, okay? If they're attacked through, through you know, um, and it, um, a vortex, I forget the name of it, but that attack when the temperatures go down to negative 20, negative 30, and people have to flee their houses out in the cold like that, there's a big possibility that a lot of people could perish just trying to flee their home because they're going to be stranded in negative, you know, in negative degree weather while they're trying to avoid bullets or even bombs or whatever the case may be. So that is a real possibility. That's why you have to be ready. We will be attacked from the south. We will be attacked from the north. And let me remind you of this prophecy from Dimitri Dudeman. He said that in the future, God said that he's going to pretty much destroy several cities here in the United States. And that when it would happen would be when there would be a uprising in the middle of the country coming up. And the government would be so busy trying to put it down that that would give the green light to Russia and China to attack the United States. From where? From South America. Right. They didn't, he didn't mention anything about Canada. But what we're seeing today is that that could be a possibility as well, which we have to get ready for. All right. So this this headline that I have for you is from uh, GatestoneInstitute.org. And it, it reads, Chinese military bases in the Caribbean. China's Communist Party seems to be implementing a multidimensional strategy in the Caribbean, ripping economic, political and potentially military gains a few miles off the shore of the United States. China's ultimate objective of its Caribbean strategy may be, may well be to confront the U.S., not only with, the, with its presence near the mainland, but also with a situation to America's military presence in the region of the South China Sea. Chinese shipments of military and police equipment to several Caribbean states could be developing into a beachhead for future People's Liberation Armies, advisory groups in the Western Hemisphere, China's construction project already includes the modernization of airports and seaports, which could increase Chinese geopolitical and military influence in the region. Chinese Defense Minister Wang Fang already is on record expressing China's willingness to deepen military cooperation with Caribbean countries. Additionally, China has been investing considerable, considerable revenue in the economies of the hemispheres anti-America Caribbean socialist states of Cuba and Venezuela, China's establishment of a Caribbean Belt and Road sector is an opportunity for the CCP intelligence operatives to sub suburn the sovereignty of the Caribbean countries by luring these societies into debt traps, economic dependency on China. In Sur, Sur Lanka, for instance, the country's inability to pay back its Chinese creditors for Beijing's modernization or the port of Hambantota <clears throat> has resulted in the South Asian country's effective loss of that air, of that port. All right, so that is very important to understand because they would be very close to our shores. Okay, 90 miles is not far at all, especially when we have hypersonic technology. Okay, so we have to understand that that would become a Cuban missile crisis where the United States could draw the red line and say, you know what? We're not going to let you come so close. Although we already know that they're already in Venezuela and Cuba. The point is that you have to get prepared, not just physically, not just spiritually, but mentally for the possibility of having a, a full blown invasion of the United States sometime in the future, all right? So the way that I see events unfolding, okay? When you look at all the information that I've looked at, that I've shared with you here, so you're up to date with everything that I'm, that I'm reading, the way that I see pretty much the timeline going is that first, we're gonna have uh, this um, civil war, more than likely, okay? And the economic collapse going around at the same time. You know, one can precede the other. It depends on how things work out, okay? 
because right now there are millions of Americans who are two weeks away from being evicted from their homes. About 40 million, I believe. That's a big number of, of people becoming homeless all of a sudden, which could, you know, that is the economic devastation. That economic devastation can be even greater when we hit hyperinflation. I do believe the United States will hit hyperinflation sometime in the future. So we have to get ready for that. But not only that, when we have this social unrest, whether it's the election, all right, if Biden gets into the office and he starts taking guns away, that could, that could create a problem. If we have hyperinflation, that can create a problem because that's exactly what happened in Venezuela, all right? Once the hyperinflation happened and people were starving, they started to turn against the government. And of course, the government of Venezuela, they deployed the military, okay? Those things can happen at the same time. While that is happening, okay, while the government is very busy putting down an insurrection, whether it comes from the left or the right, that will give the green light to Russia and China to attack the United States, especially with everything that's going on right now. Right? Even if Biden is in office, I do believe that China would attack for the simple fact that they will want to control this country, you know, on their own rather than going through a puppet. Now, it would be a lot easier for them to take over and not destroy the buildings, not destroy the infrastructure, because it would take millions and probably trillions of dollars to replace. But the point is that even if Biden is in office, even if he is a puppet, even if, you know, all this thing that has come out is true, which, of course, it is, even if that happens, we have to get prepared for that. If we do go to war, if let's say for whatever miracle Trump does come into the office, whether by, you know, um, Military, but military tribunal or martial law, whatever the case may be, maybe the war breaks out before the inauguration on January 20th, where he would have to stay in power. That could also bring a confrontation here, right? That would also uh, make China attack the United States, possibly. The point is that there's a lot of scenarios going on now. Will China destroy the infrastructure with an EMP? I would say that they would, all right? They would try to avoid it so they don't have to rebuild it. But if they must, they won't hesitate because we have the documents. I've shown them to you here where they have come out and say that their first attack would be an EMP right off the bat, okay? It wouldn't be an ICBM like we would do or it wouldn't be conventional war like we would do. They're just saying that the first thing that they do is just blow an EMP over the United States and let us tear each other apart. That's what they have come out and say in the in the in the documents that I have presented to you here before. All right. So all that all with that all of that we have to take into consideration. So uh, economic collapse, the um, social unrest, civil unrest, you know, civil war, a an attack from from a foreign government, an EMP, and then after that the invasion. Because if they are able to just, you know, detonate a, an EMP over the United States and just wait it out for two years until 90% of the country is totally, totally destroyed, then they just can come in very easily, you know, take over the remaining people who are still alive and then start rebuilding from there. And that would be the easiest, quote unquote, thing to do. All right? That's if we cannot retaliate. Of course, we will try to retaliate as much as we can. And not only that, hopefully NATO would not turn their back on us and they would actually back us up. All right, so I think that that is still another turn against China. But if they have enough friends and or NATO gives their back or turn their back on us, then we're as good as gone. So we have to get ready for all those possibilities. Now, I want to end this video showing you this video from from. Um, uh, what's it called from rebel news where they where he talks about that the Canadian government is actually They're actually giving their secrets to the Chinese Military, all right, so before I let you go before I actually show you the video I do want to remind you that this podcast is sponsored by you through the my memory survival store.com Every time you make a purchase on there, it's gonna help us continue this this broadcast okay it's going to help us continue bring you this information that no one else is talking about and not only that i'm giving you the information on how to prepare for it the information has come out 
I encourage you to go back and look at all the great reset videos where I tell you how to prepare in all the areas, all the all the uh, categories that you have to prepare for war and for other things. So I encourage you to go back and check it out. All right. So I'm going to leave you with this video. Remember, my name is Jose Prado. Always ready. These are top secret documents showing how Justin Trudeau and his government are pressuring the Canadian Armed Forces to work closely with China's People's Liberation Army. These documents show that even after China kidnapped two Canadian citizens, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, Trudeau still insisted that our military maintain warm ties with China's military. Trudeau has made protecting the feelings of China's dictator Xi Jinping a priority for our armed forces. Maybe that doesn't surprise you, but these documents also reveal that Trudeau has been sending Canadian troops to China to participate in that country's propaganda displays. And most incredible of all, Canada has been training Chinese military troops at our military colleges in Canada and unbelievably training Chinese soldiers at Canadian Forces Base Petawawa in how to wage cold weather warfare. Trudeau is literally training our enemies in how to kill us. And I'll prove it to you. You're watching The China Files on Rebel News.